to Breaking It All Down. I'm Count Zero. It's been a while since I reviewed a science fiction novel. So, I might as well get around to covering one of the biggest novels in the genre. Frank Herbert's opus, Dune. As known as how, on how I'm covering this book in the review, I'm handling Dune on its own terms. Not getting into material covered in Dune Messiah, Children of Dune, or any of the other sequels or prequels. With that out of the way, let's get started. Dune is probably one of the best-known science fiction novels of all time. So I'm going to focus on the broad strokes of the narrative, more or less, before getting into an element that I, I think doesn't get as much discussion. Dune follows Paul Atreides, the son of Duke Leto Atreides, and his concubine, not wife, the Lady Jessica. Paul's mother was instructed by the Bene Gesserit, the matriarchal holy order that is the religious center of society in the future, in order to bear a daughter to Leto, in the hopes of marrying her off to the heir of House Harkonnen, in the hopes of avoiding the destruction of both houses and producing a messiah, the Kwisatz Haderach, who have a degree of psychic perception that the Bene Gesserit themselves lack. House Atreides has been granted control of the planet Arrakis, also known as Dune. The only source of melange, also known as spice, which heightens precognitive abilities. In particular, it allows the navigators of the Spacing Guild to fold space and take ships between the stars, allowing interstellar, interstellar travel, and it's also used for the abilities of Mentats, human computers. Both of these are required for a functioning society, as an event in the past called the Butlerian Jihad made computers a taboo. Further, the withdrawal symptoms for spice are universally fatal. And even after one dose, you have to keep taking it. If galactic society is to function, the spice must flow. If spice shipments stop, the universe will collapse into a new dark age as untold quadrillions will likely die and interstellar travel will stop for a very long time. However, House Atreides has a long-standing vendetta with another noble house, House Harkonnen. House Harkonnen forms an alliance with the Emperor, Shaddam the Four, fourth, to destroy House Atreides in its entirety. However, Paul, his mother Jessica, and some of their other vassals, we learn later, survive, and join up with the Fremen, the indigenous people, sort of, of Arrakis. The Fremen are a spiritual people, somewhat narratively inspired by Islam, and they train Paul how to survive in the desert, and Paul in turn trains them in the forms of fighting that he's learned from Jessica. And after the Fremen's previous Reverend Mother dies of old age, Jessica takes over as their Reverend Mother, and they start a war against House Harkonnen. In the process of this war, Paul learns that he has the Kwisatz Haderach, and after drinking the Water of Life, the same substance which allows Jessica to assume all the memories of the previous Reverend Mother for the Fremen, um... Paul also learns he has a level of precognition which makes him dangerous to pretty much everyone. The Fremen take on the Emperor and Baron Harkonnen, resulting in the deaths of the Baron and his heir, Fade Rautha, and Paul basically becoming Emperor of the Galaxy. Again, that's the super broad strokes version. If I was going to get into super nitty-gritty detail over the story, I could end up with the video series that makes SF Debris' review of the Foundation trilogy look minuscule, just with one book. There's a massive amount of depth in this book, and every time I read it, I discover something new about this story. About the story, heck, uh, the Thug Notes video on Dune covers an entirely different set of themes than what I'm covering today, um, focusing more on the trap of Paul's prescience, which is also incredibly good. I'll put a link in the show notes. You should definitely check that out. Uh, but in this video, I'm focusing on one of the bits which I particularly like and which I came across fairly recently, which is how each faction's manipulations are represented. The story of Dune is probably the, diff the dictionary definition of the 50s Xanatos pileup. That every faction has their own agenda, and with two exceptions... Every faction has one thing about their plan that nobody knows except one or two, and which they're afraid of people knowing. There are two exceptions to parts of this rule. Now, the main factions, the ones who really matter, are House Harkonnen, 
the Bene Gesserit, the Spacing Guild, the Emperor, and by extension his forces and his right-hand man, Count Hasimir Fenrig, House Atreides, and by extension the Fremen. So let's go through these in turn. Let's start with the Emperor. The Emperor's trump card in pretty much any conflict that he has is that he has quite possibly the best troops in the galaxy. The Sardaukar. Crack shock troops with undying loyalty to the Emperor and trained on a planet that is kept secret. That secret being that Sardaukar trained on the prison planet of Seleucus Secundus, with all of their members being inmates. Seleucus Seleuc Secundus, Harvey pronounce it, is one of the hardest, toughest planets in the galaxy, one which is barely habitable, with the only comparable planet being Arrakis. Which means, whoever is in control of Arrakis could potentially, if they figure things out, produce a fighting force that is comparable to his, making them not only a political rival, but a military one. Emperor Shaddam IV suspects this of Duke Leto Atreides and allies with House Harkonnen because of this. However, the financial value that comes from having the monopoly of the harvesting and export of spice from Arrakis means that it's just too valuable as a tool to placate other noble houses for House Carino to hold on to it themselves. Additionally, it would probably draw attention to the fact that um, the Sardaukar are from Sosa Secundus, or possibly also Dune. There's an amusing bit later in the book, where Shaddam's paranoia over this whole thing almost causes him to get Hars, um, House Harkonnen, in particular the Baron, thinking about this as well. Uh, the Fremen Rebellion goes on, and House Harkonnen is put in, in charge of Dune. Baron Vladimir Harkonnen, to replenish the supply of workers and spice harvesting, harvesting, tells the Emperor he's think, been sending prisoners to work the spice fields, and was even considering sending them to fight the Fremen. The Emperor suddenly gets chilly for no explicable reason, which confuses the hell out of Baron Harkonnen. Now, only two other factions know this secret. One of them is House Atreides, who has indeed figured out the source of the Sardaukar, um, or at least has some very strong suspicions based on information from Gurney Halleck and others, and the other being the Bene Gesserit. The Gesserit, during their earlier attempts to get the Kwisatz Haderach, tried to use colonists on Seleucus Secundus in an attempt to use the rough, rough environment to make a more spiritually and mentally disciplined people. However, House Carino invaded and turned into their prison planet. We see this, well, it's impl what's well, implied to be this, when Lady Jessica drinks the water of life. Now, the Bene Gesserit are a more political force, and their political goal is to, as I mentioned during the synopsis, create the Kwisatz Haderach a precognitive who can perceive things that the women of the Bene Gesserit cannot. House Atreides knows this, knows this through Lady Jessica. Well, sort of. He, she hasn't really told this to the Duke. Uh, and Count Fenrig of House Carino may know this, as he was an earlier attempt to get the Bene, to get a Kwisat Haderach. And the Spacing Guild, in order to fold space, needs tremendous psychic powers to basically know where everything in the cosmos may be at any one time. And then, of course, to fold space itself. Paul Atreides is a void in their perception. They cannot see him or otherwise perceive him, which frightens them tremendously. The reason this is the case is because he is the Kwisatz Haderach, but they don't know the concept, so they don't know why this is. They just know that it is. House Carino basically knows this because, well, the Spacing Guild implied it to them, and Paul knows this for reasons that we'll get into later. House Harkonnen's secret isn't really a secret, because they have no secret. This sounds silly, but everyone treats them like they have some grand master plan, that they are have wheels within wheels within wheels to influence the, con the political structure of the galaxy for generations to come, because everyone else has that, right? Except they don't. Baron Harkonnen wants House Treides taken out because of the ancient vendetta between their houses. That's it. He has planned to do this is very involved and calculated, but the end goal is just take out House Atreides. As far as goals for having his children or grandchildren be emperor, that's, those plans exist, but those plans are intended to be done through, you know, 
political alliances and marriages, not through usurping the throne and a coup d'etat that takes that that takes out the emperor. Rather than using Dune to create an army of super soldiers and that sort of thing. Finally, we come to House Atreides. Putting aside Leto's plan, which is actually fairly modest to increase Leto's um, standing and and get more political power for the uh, independent houses or the lesser houses. Paul wants revenge for his father, and when he realizes that the galactic system is, as a whole, basically responsible for what's happened to him and his family, he wants to shake up the system. Had no one acted against House Atreides, it's likely everything would have been fine, and the status quo would not have suffered the galactic table flip that it experienced by the conclusion of the story. In fact, if you were to look at the story from the perspective of the Emperor, this would fit the structure of a tragedy. The Emperor falls, and House Carinos basically is set back to one planet through actions entirely of their own making. And at any time, they could have probably stepped away and saved themselves, but they didn't. In any case, House Atreides was nearly wiped out. Paul and Jessica fled to the hands of the Fremen, which ultimately led to them being supplied with everything they needed to extract their revenge because of their other two secrets. The first become, belongs to the Fremen in particular. This is kind of the Fremen secret. Now, Liet Kynes, the Imperial Planetologist, knows this, and it's theoretically possible he may have disclosed this to the Emperor, but considering that Liet Kynes had gone um, native, odds are pretty good he had. He respected the Fremen too much. This secret is the knowledge of how spice fits into the Dune ecosystem, and that effectively, spice is the excrement of a adolescent Shai Hulud, the massive sandworms that travel the deserts of Arrakis. The Fremen have a close relationship with the sandworms, and know that, in turn, sandworms can be killed outright, outright with water. Thus, they can kill sandworms, although they normally wouldn't, because they have a river have a reverential um relationship with them, and limit or end the production of spice on Dune. This is, by the way, why the ending of the film version of Dune, the David Lynch version, with Paul causing it to rain, is incredibly stupid, but that's something for another time. The second is because Paul, as the Kwisatz Haderach, knows everyone's secrets. The Emperors, the Spacing Guilds, the um, Bene Gesserit, Everybody. Bene Gesserit knows that Paul's bloodline should be able to produce the Kwisak Haderach, but they don't know he's it. He's the goal that they've been trying to get to for generations, and they got it early, and they got it without knowing it, and they don't control it. The Spacers can't read Paul, but they don't know why. And that's because they don't know anything aside from the fact that they just can't read or protect anything about him. It's because when their precognition runs into Paul's precognition, the guild's precognitive abilities basically go down the he knows that I know that he knows that I know hole and just shut down. There are a couple other sub-schemes here and there, like Leto's Mentat Thurfer Hawat being captured and enslaved by the Harkonnen after Baron Harkonnen's Mentat is killed in, um, when uh, Leto triggered the tooth, and Thurfer trying to undermine the efforts of the Harkonnen from the inside, but they are not quite as big a factor um, in some ways more than others, but I want to leave something for you to, for you to discover on your own because I don't want to give away the whole story here. There's lots of great subsidiary bits of the story, excellent characterization for the cast, and really, you need to read this book. If you've seen the, whether, whether or not you've seen the movie, whether or not you've seen the television series... There is so much depth to this that even the like six-hour Sci-Fi Channel miniseries, four and a half hour, however long it was, still didn't get everything. There is mu there are little bits and pieces with of depth and intricacy that were really lost by the experience. I definitely recommend checking out this book in whatever form you can get a hold of it: novel, audiobook, whatever. 
So, as of this recording, this coming Saturday, when this video goes out, will be my 24-hour live stream for Extra Life. So, if you'd like to contribute some money to help a worthy cause of helping sick kids, both those who are in need of desperate need of medical care and those who, to be blunt, aren't going to make it and are in hospice care, to provide them a comfortable place for their last few days, um, please give to the good cause of Dornbecker. There'll be a link below in the show notes. Donate to Extra Life. All money donated will go to Dornbecker. Additionally, there will be the live stream on my Twitch channel this com this coming Saturday, twenty four for twenty four hours. If you're interested in watching, please subscribe to my you to my Twitch channel or follow it or what have you. Link also below in the show notes, and I look forward to seeing you in the chat there. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time or on Saturday whichever comes first.